Hello. Today I'm going to be going through this BI tool I created that calls the U.S. Census API, uh, specifically the American Community Survey five-year data, uh, as you can see here. And what this tool really does is it is Power BI and Python combination. So uses Python to grab data from U.S. Census, um, but then also uses Python to create a visual in Power BI. Is that Python visual type. Um, and so the type of data we're grabbing is really numeric data that can compare year over year, um, looking at things like population, um, year over year, average age, median age, um, median rent. So the use case I had for this is I was trying to understand um, what cities for a given state uh, are experiencing the most growth or decline in this regard. Um, so you know, recently moved to Colorado, where I'm at, it's kind of expensive and kind of full. So I wanted to see what other cities in Colorado might be better options for me long term to move to. Um, and then you know, what other states nearby might also be, be good. Um, kind of diamonds in the rough, if you will. So yeah, I mean, essentially, this is a tool that lets you dynamically select a given state and variable from the US Census API. Um, and then shows you a line chart that year over year trend um, broken out by city. So I'll flash it in front of you. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, but going back to the API, I mean, you can, if you want to know a lot about the American Community Survey API or just US Census APIs in general, uh, you can definitely come here for this link in the description of the video to read all the documentation, understand all that. I don't have to spend too much time on that to hit the ground running with this, though. Um, really, you just need to make sure you get your uh, request a key form uh, completed and, and submitted, and then they get back to you pretty quickly. It's not very strict. Uh, once you have your key from there, you can just start building your Python um, scripts. So I always, of course, start out with using ChatGPT. It gets you about 80% of the way there. Uh, just a lot faster to start with ChatGPT for me. So for this use case, here is the prompt that I started with. Um, so essentially just asking ChatGPT, can you generate a Python script that uses US Census API to pull rental prices by city and state for the past five years into a PANDAS data frame? Um, then in that output, can you generate a line chart um, of the top 10 cities in terms of year-year -year growth? Uh, I noticed that, well, it depends on what state you have selected, but for some states, uh, there's just so many uh, cities that there's a ton of lines on the chart. It looks like spaghetti, it's hard to interpret. So I just did the top 10, but that can definitely be adjusted in the code um, if necessary. And then for this chart, uh, can you order the legend descending by average year of your growth? Just again, uh, something that makes it more human readable, easier to, to map what line is, is what city. Um, even with the color coding, just top line year of your growth, top line the legend from my perspective. So Hatchap GPT um, considered that in the script it gave me here. Um, then can you add a variable that filters to a given state? Um, and can you add a variable that filters to a given US census variable? So the two dynamic inputs of, of this um, tool that I've built, the state and the US census variable. So for Colorado, can I see median age? So on and so forth. Um, I want to make sure those are dynamic. I want to make sure that Power BI wasn't just hard coding anything and like the URL was passing back to the API. So it's um, good to explicitly say this. So it actually creates that state equals whatever, uh, variable equals whatever. And then when I plug this code into Power BI, it's easier to map those variables to different dimensions in my data set. So ChatGPT did a good job of you know giving an explanation, of course, um, and then breaking out the code into different steps. Um, I like to ask it, after it does that to, you know, reconcile all different pieces into one block of code. So it's easy to copy and paste that wherever. Um, but I'll actually explain step-by-step step what the code is um, in the Power BI itself. Cause I, you know, did make some changes to this code. I did rearrange certain things. First step of course is to uh, bring in your packages. So request for the API, panels for the data frame, at plotlib for the final visualization. Um, and then once you get your API key, you can um, reference that however, um, you know, for obvious reasons when I'm doing these kinds of videos, I like to store my API details in the CSV and then just, just um, you know, in a variable, go into that CSV, pull out that that specific value for the specific key I'm looking for. 
Uh, then you have your base URL, so this is always going to be the same. Whenever you're calling um, something from the U.S. Census APIs, uh, you're just going to be adding to this URL based off you know your your other parameters. So such as years. So here you include the years you want to evaluate. Um, I noticed there was one for 2020, probably because of COVID. Not entirely sure. Um, here you have your actual variable. So here's an example of, of a U.S. Census variable. This one reflects um, the median rent. Uh, so you could hard code that, um, but you know, of course, for this Power BI dynamic tool, um, we're going to have this variable be mapped to, to the data sets or, or, or the data frame called data sets um, that is created per what, what dimensions you have included in your visualizations pane for this visual in the value section. So that's what you'll be referencing um, per what you have put in there, per what you're selecting from your dynamic filters. Uh, so I look, that's what kind of helps you go in and um, to that data set and grab single value. You have states. Uh, so this is also another dynamic one. There are some more to this one though, as you can see, it's got the I look, but also has this step that's basically saying for the FIPS code, if it's a single uh, digit um, at a leading zero, because that's how the US Census API likes to receive the FIPS code for a given state. The data that I brought in wasn't like that inherently. For one, it was one, not zero, one. So added that in. Getting into the actual um, function here that is that is being run to pull the data into a data frame. Um, it's called get rental data. So you have your URL, which takes your base URL and basically just plugs in uh, the variables that you have selected here. Um, so we have these little brackets, curly brackets here um, that sort of indicating that's referencing a variable. So you have those kind of be included throughout. And you can add more here, remove some Whatever, whatever you're trying to do in your tool um, can change depending on that. Response, um, and then here's where it's actually creating a data frame, um, else gives you an error if it doesn't work. Um, you'll notice that it's running this um, function for every year you have selected. Um, and then down here, it's going to be concatenating all the different year level outputs into a single data frame. And then here it's taking each of those years, um, pivoting them out for year over year comparison um, to create that year over year growth metric. Because I'm not just looking at the sort of raw magnitudes of each of these uh, variables, I'm comparing them year over year uh, specifically to try to understand growth or decline. Um, here's where we're actually doing the plotting. Um, nothing too special here, uh, but you can definitely change some of these parameters to make the plot look. A little more visually appealing than this. That's come up with it, came up by default. Um, simple name. And yeah, so that's that's sort of your visual code. Um, now I'll get more into how we're making this dynamic, the real unique value here, the real um, things that make this a tool um, versus just like a single one-off visual. So we have the state name, of course. The state name is going to be mapped to um, a FIPS code. So for that, I simply just asked ChatGPT to give me a um, mapping table that I could copy paste uh, that has the FIPS to state name mapping. So the FIPS code is actually, as you saw, what's uh, requested, including the request to the API. Um, but you know, these FIPS codes are not super easy to remember. Um, so to be, for, make things more user friendly in the actual tool, um, mapping it to a state name. So if you select a state name, it'll filter to a given FIPS code, which will filter to what's being passed um, in, the, in the request through the API. Then uh, for the variable of interest, um, we have a table that contains all the variables and then concepts um, and labels about them. So this is a super helpful table here because similar to the FIPS code, but even worse, you could argue, uh, you have these variable uh, you have these variable numbers or IDs that are very uh, cryptic. So great to be able to select an actual like you know description of what each of these variables is instead of the variable itself. Um, so I have the concept here. You probably want the label in here as well, honestly. But to get to that data, um, let's go to the Power Query Editor. So for this, I actually made it more of a scalable data source. Um, it is a Python script data source. 
So I don't know if a lot of people know it's Power BI. I mean, you obviously have a ton of data source options, but I think most people, I mean, they use Python. They use it for the visual, not to actually um, grab data. But yeah, if you come in here and you know, get new, if you come here and type new data source, um, Python, you can see this Python script option, uh, which I have here. And so for this, again, it's not ChatGPT for this, but um, there's a URL that you can actually navigate to um, that has for 2022, you know, really the table I just showed in Power BI, the name and the label and the concept, um, you can have it pull that from the API um, and then just pull it into a data frame. So really, I mean, for this Python script data source type, you can have really whatever you want in the um, in the code, but it just needs to output a data frame because Power BI needs that tabular format to to create a table to use as a, as a data source for, for your Power BI model. So that's the really main, the main constraint as far as I understand it. So yeah, you can see this is pretty much what I showed in the web page earlier. Um, got your variable and your light and your labels and your concept. Um, so now we have this merge here. So what is this merge? So um, basically we need a relationship between uh, the FIPS table variables DF to uh, make the Python visual work. Um, you know, you can't pull from multiple unrelated tables um, for, for the given Python visual, it'll, it'll give you an error. So really isn't a lot of keys in here to create relationships between the steps table and the variables table. Um, so I just decided to merge them together uh, to do a Cartesian product. So basically um, for every FIPS or state that is here, um, just assign all of the variables that are here. So it's taking this variables DF table that is right, you know, current state here, like about 27, 28,000 records. Um, and you can just think it's multiplying it by like 50 something, uh, 50, 51 records here. So a little over a million, um, I believe, um, records in this merge. Um, and then, you know, functionally, you just have to make sure you're selecting, um, you know, at least one variable, at least one state, so that you just can, can get down to like a single value that's passed um, through the API, that's passed through the US Census API for, for states and, and um, variable. So to just sort of go over what I just went over, but more in the application view. So we have you know, your state filter here, which everything's coming from merge now. So state name, and then when you filter to that, it's going to give you the FIPS code. Um, and then, you know, for selecting a given variable, I have the concept in there. But again, it's probably good to have the label in there as well. So I'm going to add that in. So I did notice that so sometimes um, a given concept can have multiple variables. It's not always the case. Um, and then the label will help you narrow that down a little bit more. And again, these are the default names it gives you. Um, off the US Census webpage, you could rename these. I, but now I'll walk you through a few example use cases. Uh, so here you can see for Colorado, we we have um, the median gross rents and dollars selected. And so you can see the year over year trend, um, which cities are sort of at the top of the growth versus bottom over time. Um, it's interesting to look at like how some cities go way down for a certain year and they go way up for others. Pick a different state if we wanted to. It'll think about it for a second. Some cities are more of a blip than others, perhaps not always included in the ACS. We'll try a different, different concept here. So I want to see something related to population. So I'll see like overall population change, total population change. There's a lot of options here, so you'll have to definitely scroll for a bit sometimes. Total population, here we go. There's just the one label for this one. Interesting. So Broomfield really spiking up 2021. Looks like there's a bit, a little bit of a migration out of Denver, out of Fort Collins in 2021. That kind of tracks, honestly, from what I was feeling. So let's try different cities to Florida. I used to live in Florida, so can kind of eyeball this one too. Yeah, you can definitely see when everyone moved to Florida in 2021 because um, of all of the 
lockdowns from COVID and Florida being so lenient compared to other states in that regard. All right, let's do one more. So for this one, we'll do age, median age by sex to start. And then I believe there's three of these. Uh, so we can see there's a total and then there's median age for just males or just females. Um, let's just do total. You're really seeing a lot of variance here. Greer is a pretty small town, although it's growing. Uh, that might be why data set might be a little small there. More subject to, to bias. But yeah, that's basically the tool. As always, I will include a link to my GitLab that actually has a small for download, all the code in it, everything I just showed. So you should be able to just put in your API credentials and hit the ground running with this thing. So please like or subscribe, feel free to comment, and thanks for watching.